Hi YouTube, welcome back. This is Peggy Lou and you are watching Peggy Lou Who Reads or Peggy Lou Who Reads. It's kind of like a choose your own emphasis adventure. This is going to be my May TBR. And again, TBR for the new kids in the room stands for to be read. Um, but before we get into it, there's just a few things I want to say. First of all, it's only been a couple days since my first video went up and already I have gotten so much support and in the way of likes and comments and subscriptions. I think as of filming, I have about 17 subscribers, which just blows me away. And so I am so humbled and grateful and appreciative of the community and the support I'm getting. So thank you all so much. Also, it's a messy hair day and I don't care, so fucking deal with it. Um, and finally, kind of on the same note, it's spring, so my left eye, I just can't seem to get it to stop watering. So we're all just going to pretend that my left eye makeup and my right eye makeup match. You're just all going to do me a solid. Thanks. I'm recording this on May 10th, um, which is kind of a little bit ridiculous, but I'm, you know, I'm behind. This may become a trend. Um, so on a more serious note, I just want to um, say that I know that a lot of the booktube community is focusing in May on reading uh, books that feature Asian American and Pacific Islander characters or uh, Asian American Pacific Islander authors because May is AAPI Heritage Month and I didn't know. So um, I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't know I was going to be doing this so I didn't plan ahead and that's on me. Uh, but next year I will probably do that because I think it's a really great idea to um, focus on those underrepresented groups and to really celebrate their culture and especially in this time when the AAPI community is facing so much hatred and violence so um, I really appreciate the community for doing that as a whole and I look forward to participating next year. But yes, I've already started reading some of these books. As I mentioned in my previous video, I'm a really slow read reader so this will be um, so be interesting. That being said, let's hop right in to my TBRs. Uh, I do not have a fun game or anything. These are just the books that I happen to have next that I wanted to read that happen to be the ones that came from the library. Um, I'm sort of at the mercy of um, the on hold list, which not complaining. I'm, I have plenty to read, but, um, but yeah, let's jump right in. So first off, First off, um, I don't know if this will show up on the camera very well. There's probably a little bit of a glint, but I have Black Sun on my e-reader. This is from the Oakland Public Library and that I was able to check out and download on my e-reader. Uh, one of the things that's really cool about this is a fantasy set in a um, alternate world. And so one of the things that I really like about this is that it is the type of book that has maps. And uh, since I have it on my little tablet reader thing, I can do that little right work. And zoom on on the map, which is kind of fun. Um, so Black Sun is uh, the first in a series by Rebecca Rowanhorst. I did not realize that it was the first in a series when I picked it up. I missed the memo somehow on that one. And I have been trying to avoid series, to be honest, because I just... There's so many books and I want to read all the books and if I get involved in a series that means I'm going to be reading just that series, that author, that universe for who knows how long. And also because I do tend to sort of space out on um, details sometimes when I haven't like when I read a book and then the next novel in the series comes out maybe a year later or two years later I don't remember so I then have to go back and reread. The first. So instead of reading new books, I'm just rereading the same book over again, but it's fine. I'll get over it. Um, and I've read lots of series in the past, so I don't even know what I'm talking about. Like, don't listen to me. Anyway, Black Sun. Uh, Black Sun is a story about 
a land where there is um, a young man who is the rebirth of a god that has been gone from the world for some from some time. And it follows three or four main characters um, that are from different societies or cultures within this world, and they're all converging together uh, to a specific point in time. It is obviously fantasy. Uh, there are crows. My little goth heart is happy. Cool representation of, uh, you know, non-binary characters, LGBTQ, T A I plus uh, world is represented. Um, one of the main characters seems to be pansexual. So um, yeah, so far so good. I am actually about halfway through this at this point. So um, good likelihood that I'm going to finish this up this month. So Black Sun by Rebecca Baronhorst. That's first. Second, I am so late on this bandwagon, but I am reading Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clarke. This novel is chunky. Um, this is about 850 pages long. I don't know that I'm going to finish it this month, but I am about yay far in. Um, and so uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell is uh, set in 1806. England during the Napoleonic Wars. So if you're a history buff uh, or a literary buff, um, 1806 is um, just a little bit before the uh, Regency era. So this is, you know, a few years before Mr. Darcy and Bridgerton, etc. Um, and it is sort of in a way I've explained it to people as sort of like a transaction of, um, I don't even know if that's a word. Um, it, it's a mixture of historical fiction, one of my loves, and fantasy, one of my other loves. So it is a story about um, how magic has been uh, missing from England for several hundred years until Mr. Norrell uh, arrives on the scene and brings magic back. He performs a feat of magic and astonishes England. Um, and Jonathan Strange is his uh, apprentice student who eventually becomes his rival. It also uh, also follows how Mr. Norrell and Jonathan Strange seek to help Britain in the Napoleonic War. So er, wars. So Napoleonic Wars. If you're not a history buff, brief. Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, um, short French guy with his hand in his shirt all the time. He is on a rampage throughout Europe and wanting to basically colonize the world and uh, and and take over the entire planet for France. And England are the great foil of France at this time, and so they are warring back and forth. So this is, um, like I said, this is 850 pages or so. It, we'll see how it goes. Um, I actually read Susanna Clarke's second novel. This is her first novel. Um, I read her second novel, which is Piranesi. I think that's how it said. Um, that book is actually like this much of a novel. Not, maybe not even that much, maybe like this much of a novel. I think maybe she used up all of her pages on Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Um, also the book has pictures. Um, so that's, that's lovely. Um, picture book. Um, yeah. Then I have a, um, nonfiction, which is My Own Words by Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I had actually picked this book up, uh, prior to us losing RBG, RIP. Um, and I am reading it very very slowly, like even slow for myself. This is not a standard memoir where it just tells the story of her life. It is um, actually more a collection of many of her briefs and uh, opinions and articles she wrote, speeches she gave throughout her life. 
And um, so I'm just reading, you know, each chapter is a speech or an article. So I just read one every day or so. Um, and so it's going to take me forever to get through it, even though it's not a very long book. Um, again, there are lovely pictures of Ruth Bader Ginsburg and her life and her family, etc. So if you're looking for the story of Ruth Bader Ginsburg's life, this isn't specifically it. It's, um, it does, you do learn a lot about her and her life, but it's not just the narrative story of, of, of this is my life. Um, this is more just centered around, uh, her work. So this is Liberty by Caitlin Greenidge, and it is set in Reconstruction Era Brooklyn. It is about Liberty, who is the uh, freeborn daughter of a black physician, a black female physician, inspired by the life of one of the first black female doctors in the United States and rich with historical detail. And it is about how her mother has planned her life for her and wants her to study medicine and and work with her but Liberty is much more interested in music and so it's about how she struggles to find herself and find her place in the world in uh, Reconstruction Era and also reconcile with her mother. I haven't started it yet but um, I don't want to be a book of the month fail uh, type of person, so I gotta keep up. So I gotta read my books of the month. I know that that is also a thing that people are doing in May, particularly on Instagram. People are using the month of May to read their unread book of the month novels. So uh, if, if that's you, maybe leave a comment below and let me know what you haven't read yet. So those are my four main TBRs for the month of May. If I actually manage to complete all of that, I have picked up from my favorites shelf of seven books, The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. I just smacked myself in the face with it. That was not cute. Um, I have picked up The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin, which is one of my favorite books. However, it'll be the first one to admit to you that I read this so long ago that I don't really remember much about it, so I'm looking forward to reading it again. This is why I'm doing this adventure of rereading my favorites. So The Left Hand of Darkness follows the main character, whose name I cannot remember, and I don't see on the back, um, as he is an emissary to an alien world, but really isn't it an alien world if he's the alien He's the one that doesn't belong. Um, but he is an emissary to the planet uh, Winter, and the, the uh, beings of Winter are um, able to choose and change their gender at will. And that is about as much as I remember about this book. So looking forward to reading it again. I love Ursula K. Le Guin. I've read a lot of her nonfiction as well as her fiction and um, always a delight for me. So those are my TBRs for the month of May. We'll see how it goes. It may be that these are all gonna be the exact same four books, four or five books that, we, that I'll be reading in June. I'll come back in a month and do the same video all over again. If you like what you've seen and you want to see more of my content, remember to subscribe. If you hit the little bell, it will give you the option to choose how often you receive notifications when I upload new content. And maybe if you made it this far, use a little bird emoji that I'm going to put over here. Uh, the bird for the crows in Black Sun. I don't know that emojis have a crow, so I'm just going to say bird. Thank you so much for your time, and until next time, read well. Anyway, um, and I am, ah, <laughs> If you hit the little bell, it'll tell it, it'll put a bird on it. And are we doing?
Do people remember that? Or if you want to tell me that these books suck, all are welcome.